Today we're going to talk about rules for writing radicals. There are two rules that you need to keep in mind when you write your answers on any math problem involving radicals. The first is no radicals on bottom. Now when you're working you may have radicals in the denominator but when you present your final answer you need to make sure that you have those taken care of. Second is no fractions under radicals. We're going to look at examples of both of these. In example one, you can see that we have one over the square root of three. It's breaking that first rule of no radicals on bottom because we do indeed have that radical sign on the bottom. Our strategy for these problems is going to be to multiply by the same root. That is, the square root of three is the problem here. So we're going to multiply by another square root of three, both on top and on bottom. So we're going to multiply the top by the square root of 3 and the bottom by the square root of 3. On the top of the fraction, 1 times the square root of 3 gives me the square root of 3. On the bottom of the fraction, recall that the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 gives us the square root of 9, which is 3. Or the matching pairs of 3's pull out of the radical to give us the whole number 3. Please do not try to cancel anything that's under a radical with anything that's outside of a radical. We only multiply what's outside with what's outside, what's inside with what's inside. We only divide what's inside with what's inside and outside with outside. This is our final answer. Example two, square root of five over two times the square root of two. The part of this problem that's breaking our rules is the square root of two on the bottom. We don't mind radicals on top, but we do not like them in, on bottom in our final answer. So that's what we're going to get rid of. To get rid of that square root of two, we're going to multiply by another square root of two. Of course, what we do on bottom, we'll have to do on top. Please remember that what's inside a radical multiplies with what's inside, what's outside multiplies with what's outside. Because the five and the two are both under a radical and nothing simplifies, I get the square root of 10 here. On the bottom, the two is outside. The two and two under the radicals multiply inside, giving me four. The square root of four is two, and that pulls that two back out. Remember the reason we're multiplying by the square root of two was to get rid of the radical on bottom, and that's exactly what happened. Example three, here we see a fraction under the radical, the square root of two ninths. Our strategy here is going to be to separate this into two radicals. The square root of 2 ninths is the same as the square root of 2 over the square root of 9. So now rule 2 is fixed. We no longer have a fraction under a radical, but notice we're back to rule 1 where we have a radical on bottom. Luckily this is a radical that can be easily fixed because we know the square root of 9 is the whole number 3. Notice. A radical in the top is okay, it's just a radical in the denominator that is not. Example four, the first thing we're going to do is to split this fraction under a radical into two separate radicals. We get the square root of eight over the square root of 27. Then we're going to simplify these radicals if possible. Both the square root of 8 and the square root of 27 break down and can be simplified, and you can see my answers here. The final thing I'm going to do is get rid of this radical that's in the denominator, that is the square root of 3. The way I'm going to get rid of it is to multiply both the top and bottom by another square root of 3. So on top, I have a 2 outside, that 2 will remain outside. I have a two and a three inside because they don't match and no parts match. They just multiply together, giving me a six under the radical. On the bottom, I have a three outside and two square root of threes, which when they multiply together become a whole number three, 
which comes out and multiplies times this whole number three, giving me a nine as my denominator. My final simplification then is two square root of six over nine. Thanks for watching, hope this helps.